the series began uh, a number of years ago. I did one or two paintings uh, of Toronto. And I remember doing them and thinking, that was interesting, and I'm never going to do another one again because they were so hard to do. They took about three times longer than anything else I did. But this, the theme kind of haunted me. Um, I, over the years, have spent a lot of time in the inner city. But to understand this series of paintings, you've got to know two things about me. And number one, which is really central to the theme, is I'm from a small town. And we didn't have a lot of money, so living in Fergus, Ontario, uh, we didn't come to Toronto. Uh, the only memory I have of Toronto is coming to the CNE to see Roy Rogers. Uh, and a few people are looking around saying, who? <laughs> I, I, I see people, some people who know who I'm talking about. Uh, so when I did come to the city, it was alien to me. Uh, it was also a little bit scary and very, very stimulating. Now, having lived in this area for more than 40 years, I still am that small town boy. And I think to be an artist is a form of arrested development. We get kind of stuck in our childhood, and that's a positive thing. So that excitement that I felt when I first saw downtown is still with me. Um, the other thing that is really, really central to this work is the fact that for 30 years I drew comic books. I refuse to call them graphic novels. They're, they're comic books, and I'm proud to say I drew comic books, and I love comic books, and I still go to the comic book shop faithfully every Wednesday and fill my sketchbooks with comic book characters. But what that taught me was to be a storyteller. And really, this series is essentially a novel about the city. And the lead character in the series is, is a streetcar. People say, do you get sick of painting streetcars? And I say, well, they're not really just about the streetcars. They're about the environment. When you paint uh, a streetcar, and I used to be known for painting the boats of Port Credit, you automatically have a little story. Uh, who's on the streetcar? Where are they going? Uh, are they with uh, a friend or a lover or uh, they had a bad day? It fascinates me as I watch them go by. So that's sort of the theme. The second theme is kind of a lament, if you will. I don't think they're message paintings, but there is a, a sense that I feel that we're losing something as these uh, wonderful old communities are developed. Uh, I try to catch the vestige of old Toronto just that, that we need to hold on to these, these parts of our community and of our history. And that's what I try to do in my paintings. Now, comic books are, a, are an apprenticeship. And they're a wonderful art school. And they're not for everybody. But the reason I say that uh, is if you are drawing comic books, you have to draw everything and anything. And I have some, some fellow cartoonists with us tonight. You can't say, I don't want to draw a streetcar. If it's in the script, you have to figure out how to draw it. So central to my work is my love of drawing. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why people keep talking about my quote unquote style. Uh, I, I don't particularly think about style, but what I do think about when I make these paintings is accuracy and I want to be true to the environment that I'm painting. Um, I've spoken to a lot of you this evening about color and your reaction to the color. In fact, almost everyone who's spoken to me about my painting has talked about the intensified color. So uh, if I may, at the risk of being too much of a school teacher, I'll talk a little bit about the process. Um, and if you want start to drift off, that's fine. <laughs> um, I'm an acrylic painter. And uh, acrylic is a unique medium. It's essentially a, a, a plastic. It's a polymer. And um, I'm slightly allergic to oil paint. And what you do with acrylic is you build layers upon layers upon layers. These paintings may look like they were painted rather quickly. But in actual fact, there are often five or six, even 10 layers of color to create that vibrancy. Which, which you're reacting to. Um, it really stopped me if I get too boring. I won't spend too long on this, but 
some people ask me to talk about this and talk about influences and process. Um, and influences, that's a, that's a very thorny subject with me because I'm kind of an omnivore. And by that I mean I'm not just influenced by painting. I have my favorite painters. Uh, I'm an avid gallery goer, but I'm also a movie nut. Uh, I love vintage illustration. Um, I'm fascinated by book covers, album covers, and uh, I think I bring all that to play. Um, I think I'm also a bit of a frustrated movie director, so one of the reasons you're going to see these kind of panoramic frames is because I'm after that cinematic look. It fascinates me to think that these paintings may still be around in 40 years when the city that I've painted is not around in 40 years. A lot of people don't realize that the Group of Seven actually started as urban painters. They did paintings of old Toronto, industrial areas, and then Tom Thompson said, hey guys, you know, I was in Algonquin Park, man, and it's wicked cool. <laughs> so um, that's how they kind of moved out of the city, but they were urban painters. And I bounced back and forth between the north and the city, too. Um, this is only part of, of my interest. Uh, one of the things that I'm really, really passionate about is outdoor painting, painting au plein air. And I have my plein air buddies are with me tonight, some, some wonderful artists who encourage me to go out on location. I tried it in the inner city, not a good idea. Uh, for one thing, I nearly got hit by a streetcar a couple of times. <laughs> they moved really fast. And uh, I met some really furry kind of people there uh, in the inner city. And so uh, I, don't, I don't do that as much. I would rather be in Killarney and in Algonquin Park with my, my buddies and the moose. <laughs> Leave us alone. Um, anyhow, I start with the best materials. Uh, I do a lot of preparation. Uh, people who are studying art or who are interested in painting say, well, you produce a lot of paintings. And I do produce a lot of paintings. And the reason is, I don't start a painting until I know how to do this painting. Um, it's not like in the movies, where I'm kind of paint splattered and inspired. Uh, I would say I spend half the time getting ready to do the painting before I paint. And that, as I said earlier, requires spending a lot of time with a camera in my hand on those streets. Um, and it's fascinating. It really is fascinating. People say, why do you paint Chinatown so much? Well, go down to Chinatown on a Saturday night and your senses are just overloaded with color and noise and smells. <laughs> Put your stuff in the fridge, I don't, you know, I mean. But it's exciting and you can see how that excites me visually. Now here's where it becomes uh, fun is if I then bring them into the gallery and someone has the same experience, that you are responding to that too. So it's, it's work, it's labor, but it's enjoyable work, it's enjoyable labor, but it is a process. I start, uh, my paintings for the first hour look like abstracts. By that I mean I find the big shapes, the mood, the form, and I use big brushes. I always do the block-ins early in the morning when I'm really fresh. And I do them quickly, and it's, it's really a, an exciting part of the process. The next part of the process is then to start to figure out the perspective. Uh, in my studio, and this is a little pedestrian, but I'll, it's relevant, I have my easel and a 27-inch monitor right beside my easel. See, digital photography allows us to do things we couldn't do before. Um, we can see into the shadows, which we didn't used to be able to do with our photos. We can actually combine exposures, and we can get a lot of visual information from that monitor. It's almost like being there again. I always do a sketch, sometimes three or four sketches in my sketchbook. And for those of you who are aspiring painters, if you don't carry a sketchbook, if you don't have a sketchbook, you're doing yourself a disservice. I fill one of these about a month, and uh, Crystal will tell you I paint all day and then sit beside her watching TV filling my sketchbook. It's amazing because I started keeping sketchbooks when I was uh, 20, 
So I have an extraordinary record of my life. You know, the ups and downs and the highs and the lows and the darks, etc. Anyhow, that's behind the scenes. That will either make you appreciate the pictures more or, geez, that's boring.